Today I've got an antique weapon to show you, and quite a unique one. This is an axe from Southern Africa, it belongs either, either to the Tsonga or Venda people, which are Bantu-speaking cultures. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of information about them. When I looked up uh, Tsonga warriors, I just found pictures of Zulu warriors, and apparently the Zulu conquered large parts of the Tsonga population. According to the seller, this is probably from 1900, he also said that it's a steel blade when I asked. I assumed that this would be iron. So really interesting design. So it's kind of like an, an axe spear hybrid with a bit of sword mixed in there as well. You look at the really long cutting edge. This makes it kind of like a sword on a stick. But also this really looks like a, a spear blade. That's what I would expect on a spear, but at the same time it's hafted like an axe. So lots of different functions and all combined in a very pragmatic way. This is what I, why it caught my attention. It's sometimes called a ceremonial axe, but most sources seem to refer to it as a battle axe. And I very much agree with that. It definitely looks like a weapon, you know, purposefully designed for combat and uh, certainly not a tool. If you look at how thin the blade is, this is not for wood chopping. This is for cutting flesh because uh, if you try to chop down a tree with it, you would most likely damage it, bend it. Apparently it's been suggested that this type of ax might be inspired by British bayonets. If you imagine this to be the gun barrel, and this is kind of how the bayonet would be in relation to that. This way of hafting an ax blade has been around in one form or another since the Stone Age, really. Now, this is a little bit different, but um, you know, it's possible that they might have had bayonets in mind when designing this, but you know, it's hard to say for sure either way. So the tang here goes all the way through to the end. Uh, usually with this sort of uh, hafting method, it sticks in like halfway or so. I've seen some examples where a length of tang sticks out and is actually bent over to hold this in place. The handle looks like it was hand carved with a knife. It doesn't seem to have been polished. I mean, over the years, of course, it's got smooth, but you can still see the cut marks. And what I find interesting about that is you know, how even and straight it is. Overall, there's a little bit of a bend in it, but it looks fairly straight and even regular. So it's a pretty good job, you know, whoever did this. When I first picked this axe up, I immediately noticed two things. One, the lightweight. It's really quite a nimble weapon. And second, the really thin handle. You know, I don't have very large hands, but this seems really remarkably thin to me. I would personally prefer a thicker handle. I don't know if there's a particular reason for it, but it's definitely noticeable. This, I assume, would, would have been used with a shield, so you could you know, strike over the shield, or you know, if you go up against another shield, you could try to get around it by thrusting around. You could also use this like a short spear. So behind the shield, just thrusting out like this. This is double-edged, by the way, sharpened on the front and the back. So you could do backhand cuts like this and you know, try to get around the shield, either around the side or around the top and strike down like this. You could also potentially choke up on it and use it like a tomahawk at very close measure. You know, this essentially becomes like a knife. So you could stab like this, you could do draw cuts or slashes at grappling distance. And um, with the way the blade protrudes here, this could even potentially serve as a bit of a guard. I don't think that's intentional, but you know, I'm just speculating here, just going by the design, you know, it's practical implications. Cause you know me, that's what I'm generally most interested in. I usually focus less on the history and more on how could this be used? You know, what are the practical aspects of this? And uh, yeah, but really mainly I would think this would probably be used you know, one handed like this together with a shield. And the thin blade would be pretty good at cutting, I think. So yeah, the blade is sharpened on both sides. The main edge seems to be a little sharper than the false edge. And when I inspect it, it seems like some spots are sharper than others. So I'm guessing that it just dulled over time and it's not as sharp anymore as it used to be. But at the same time, I'm not seeing any 
obvious signs of use. Like I don't see any nicks. I don't see any signs of repair or resharpening. So I don't think this has been in combat, but you, know, you never know. It could have been well repaired. I just don't really think so. What I find a little peculiar is that the point is rounded. This seems like a perfectly adequate blade for thrusting, so it could be pointier. That might have to do with the material. Maybe it's not hardened. Maybe you know a, a narrower point would get damaged too easily. Although I have seen pretty strongly tapered iron blades too, so maybe they just thought this is good enough for thrusting, and I think it probably would be. Or there might be other reasons. Hard to say, really. It could, of course, also be used with two hands for a more powerful cut. Now, with my training, I'm, of course, tempted to use it like a longsword, which actually works decently well. You can throw a sword cut with this, and I think it would be very effective. You can probably hear it even. I think it could deliver quite a devastating cut with its long blade. Now, I originally intended to get this for testing, you know, to polish it and sharpen it and use it. But of course, there's always the concern with antiques. You know, do you alter them or, or do you just leave them be? Because altering them, of course, changes their value. And some people think that they should just always remain the way they are. Personally, I think in case of a weapon like this, if it was originally intended for use in combat, it's perfectly fair to restore it and sharpen it and actually use it and try it out. Um, but of course, it also depends on the rarity. There are certain antiques that are, you know, one of a kind pieces and you really don't want to mess with them. In this case, they don't seem to be too rare and it, it's not extremely high value. I bought this for 300 US dollars, uh, but you know, at the same time, I am a little bit hesitant, also particularly because I see that there are two cracks right here. There are a few other cracks as well in the wood. I was hoping that I might be able to remove the blade and re-haft it, test it that way, but looking at it, I don't think I can actually remove this without damaging the handle. So, and I, using it, this might destroy the handle, which I really don't want to, because it's, it's quite nicely made and looks interesting. So the better way to go about it, I think, would be to take the measurements, you know, draw a template of it, and then have someone make a functional reproduction of it that I can then test, and I can then pass this on to another collector of antiques. So if there's anyone who would be interested in making one of these, let me know. I'm definitely up for the idea. Uh, I would very much like to keep this in my collection because of how interesting it is and I quite like it, but I'm going to have to pass it on to you know, reclaim the funds, so to speak, for other videos because the budget is seriously limited these days. And uh, yeah, so if you are interested in acquiring this, let me know. I might make another video about it or two, but yeah, so that's it for right now. I said, really fascinating design, uh, combined several different functions in a pretty smart way. And I have to say, I'm kind of surprised that this design isn't more common than it seems to be. Well, either way, I hope you found it interesting and thanks for watching.